Hello everyone, welcome back to Angela's Craft Room. Today I've got another sympathy card for you using Lovely as a Tree. Now I'll just hold it up for you because it's quite, it turned out quite effective with the sponging and then doing the different stamping and putting another layer of cardstock before stamping the second lot of trees. So I thought I'd just show you how I actually did that and this time I'm going to put a moon in here just and then we can compare it at the end and just see whether we like it or not and I might be doing a little bit of tearing with the paper as well which I do like doing but um, not a, I don't do a lot of it I used to do heaps of it I just got over it I think anyway so to start with We've got a piece of Perfect Plum today, which measures 11 inches long by 4 and 1 8 and scored at 5 and a half. And I'll just put my bone folder down there because I didn't do that before coming on camera. So it's a nice crisp fold. And then I've got a piece of Marina Mist, which measures five and a quarter and three and seven eighths, and we're just going to glue that straight onto that card. Just going to give us a nice little blue border underneath our sponging. Okay, so I've moved my camera today, so I'm hoping that it's going to give you a lot better view of it. So there we go. So we're just eyeballing it just to get it on as straight as possible. Just make sure no glue is going to ooze out anywhere on me. And I just like to turn it over and smooth it. Then that's the glue is going to take as well doing that. So then we're ready for uh, sponging. But first, I just wanted to show you how now with the Stamparatus, I'll just take that plate off. So I'm going to pop this plate on. And I, I'm using both sides today so I can show you how good this Stamparatus is, how you could actually have four stamps positioned ready to go. Okay, so just for the inside of the card, I just want to pop my stamp case underneath. So I'm just putting it underneath so that when I'm stamping up on here I'm not pushing the plate down and you know putting pressure on the hinges so and it gives me a really good leverage okay so I'm just so how I did how I did the inside of my card was I that's right. So I popped it right up into the left hand corner there, put my magnet on, stamped, stamped up my tree, which I've got up there, stamped up my tree and just brought it down like that. And so that was one stamp I used. Okay, so then I can just take that plate off and it's not in my way. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that and then you'll see how I've already positioned two other stamps with the other plate, one on this side and my sentiment, sorry, my sentiment on the outside and then my trees on the inside but they're on the same plate. 
so I'll show you how that works too today so I just wanted to show you that so I'm just going to glue that into the inside of my card and I do like the perfect plum color no stamping up have discontinued some colors and brought in some a new range of colors with a new sleek design stamp pad so that's great time for me to add some new colors so that's the inside of our card done and we'll just give it a bit of a rub so we've done the front up to there and then we've got the inside done too and I think it just looks lovely in perfect plum so we can put that aside pop our glue away so it doesn't clog now I've got a piece of shimmery white which is five inches by three and one eighths of an inch and I've just cut out with my circle punch um, using the eclipse masking tape you could use sticky notes but I love my eclipse masking tape for those that watch me regularly now I'm going to sponge this entire piece using my sponge brayer and you can see, still see I haven't even cleaned it from my previous video um, so I'm going to start off with sponging the top part with marina mist just so you can see you can see there so I just like to go in one direction and then straight across it's alright to come back this way but just don't stop halfway So you can see that's going on quite nicely. I'm just just using up the ink that's on there. And then I'm going to I've got a little bit use a little bit of perfect plum. So I'm just going to go once because I can always add colour but I can't take it away. And I don't want it to be too deep that you can't see the trees because I felt with my original card that I showed you at the beginning I used rich raspberry and it was quite deep, a deep colour. So you're not going to see down here because we're going to actually put a piece of teared whisper white across there. Well actually shimmery white. So I've only used the two colours. I'm just being a bit careful how much perfect plum is going on there. So I'm just going to go back into my marina mist just for a second. My perfect plum. Perfect plum's quite good. It's nowhere near as dark as the rich raspberry was. Now 
Right, I do have rose red here and I might even just go across the perfect plum. Just, it might even get covered at the end, We're not, I'm not sure. But I've just put a little bit of rose red on top. I think that looks quite effective. Marina mist because I really want that moon to really be and just make sure you blend the colors in and don't worry about cleaning your brayer I never do I just I mean after this video I will but like after each color there's no need to and I'm just going I'm just using the what color is left on the brayer which isn't much now it's just about all off there's really no need to do right to the bottom because as I said I'm going to do something different there so I'm finished with the marina mist um, finished with the rose red and I'll just keep the perfect plum there for a moment then I'm just going to use my tweezers to just get underneath that eclipse masking tape it's very sticky but it's an also it's it's excellent when you're masking just need to get under the edge and there's our beautiful moon okay so I think I'll do what I'm going to do first is I'm going to bring in the Stamparatus going to stamp that right up there so you can see I've got the lovely as the trees there grab my magnet and just put in this corner so I'm I'm stamping this before before I put my teared piece of shimmery white on so I might just grab Some more Zada choke. Sorry about that. Then we're just going to go down like that. So I'm just going to stamp it. And having having the um, cake, the stamp case, the stamping up case underneath your plate gives you really good, able to apply really good pressure without bending it bending the plate backwards so then I'm just going to bring that over and I'm just going to stamp that a couple of times so I get a really good colour We could have even gone over into the moon if we wanted to. So that's looking really lovely on that perfect plum on that side. Okay. Then just need to wipe off this ink from the 
lovely as a tree because I will have to position that to do I'm not sure if I'm going to use that one I think I've decided to use the other stamp then also so I've finished with that for a moment there's quite a few steps to this card so then I've got a piece of shimmery white which measures five inches by one and a half and you can see I've already torn a piece off at the top now I wasn't really happy how that was because what I'm going to do is glue this when I have put my sentiment on I'm going to glue that down like that but what I wanted to do was just use a little bit of perfect plum and a dobber stamping up dobber and just sponge that teared bit you don't have to it's just I felt that I wanted I just needed to add that and if you don't if you're not into tearing all you do is you can just add just don't do this part of um, adding the ink onto the teared part but I just think it just looks a little bit better adds a bit of character once it's glued to your card so we're going to stamp the sentiment on it first before we add it to the card so just pop the perfect plum out the way then we're going to stamp the sentiment which is already on my plate on the outside so you might think how in the world am I going to stamp that sentiment well what you do is you just lift this plate off turn it around and put it back in and my sentiments at the top now so you can have a stamp on this side stamp on that side and the same with your other plate that you bring from the top so you can actually have four stamps positioned all at once now I'm going to just pop this right to the top sure it's straight because now I've torn it it's not sitting exactly at the top but that's all fine and then we're just going to ink up our sentiment in just oops nearly forgot to put my case underneath just to give it a bit of so I can really add some pressure when I'm stamping up my stem so that's just in memento black so you can see how awesome this stamparatus is now I'll just grab a cotton bud there because I can just see that there's a little bit of ink on the edge and I don't want that to transfer then bring it over a second time and that's that done so just slide your magnet off So that's just a couple of tips with the Stamparatus. Then we're going to bring this back in and we're going to glue this piece on there like that. Okay. So 
So you want to get up near the edge, hopefully, like into the teared part so that it gets glued down. I might use a cotton bud just to pull a little bit away from the edge. So I nearly wasn't going to do the tear edge and I thought no I'll do it and then you know if you don't like doing it just don't do that just don't tear it. I'm just going to so I really want that up into the teared area. Okay. So now I'm going to pop this down here. And using the Tombow glue is awesome because you can see how it's sliding around until I get it to the position that I want. Letting me pull it down a little bit. So I'm going to turn it over and just gently rub that. So hopefully the teared part will adhere to the, the front of the card as I want it to. So that's quite nice isn't it like it's just and you could just put that on your card like that if you wanted to but what we're going to do is we're going to put I've already done the sentiment so I'll take that plate off the Stamparatus and grab the other plate that has the big tree on it so I'm going to put it at the top this time and I've got my I've got my stamp on this inside and when it comes over you'll be able to see it stamped down. So I need to put my case under here, under there like that to give it some leverage when I'm stamping on it. So I might just bring that down to the 10 centimetre. The good thing about the Stamparatus is it is in centimetres and inches. So I'll just bring it down to the 10 centimetre grid line. These are just such strong magnets. I'm even having trouble moving that. I just want it to be straight. And then that's just going to come down like that. Now I'm just thinking what colour will we put that in. I might just grab the Perfect Plum I think. Rather than the Always Artichoke. And it's going to come into the moon a little bit. And just press down where the stamp is. Don't press down here on the corner. Just always press where your stamp is. Now you can see it's missed a little bit there. And that's because we've done the teared edge. So I'm going to stand up and really add some pressure. right on that teared edge piece. Just 
one more time. That's the only thing about adding the teared piece. But that's pretty good. So we've got that image like that now. So we're finished with the Stamparatus. So I hope those couple of tips there will help you. So now we've only got to just pop everything out of the way. Bring back in our card base, that is. And I'm just going to adhere that to the front of the card. And I really love the look of this sponge. Like the video I did before was we sponged it differently to this one. But it was using Lovely as a tree. So if you haven't checked that one out, do check them out. A good way is um, check out my playlists. I do try and group my cards. So if I, every time I, I do a Lovely as a tree I use the lovely as a tree. I put it in the playlist which is labelled lovely as a tree. So you don't have to go through a heap of tutorials to find it. So just make sure we've got the card up the right way. Just want it straight. So I'm just going to turn that over. But adding that teared piece at the bottom, it does add a little bit more texture to your card as well. And there's that one finished. So that's the card today. And this was the first one I did. So I just did it, if you don't like the tear technique, you just put it down straight. You don't tear it. So that one I didn't tear. And I used rich raspberry in here and it was very dark colour. Whereas I found, I think the perfect plum was just that little bit lighter and it was, and having the moon too. So same techniques but just adding a couple of things like masking the moon and using the tearing technique. So thank you for joining me today from this video and until next time, happy crafting.